Tracy has a question, and it's regarding the line in the Lord's Prayer translated generally as forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us or forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. My question is about the quote as Mm -hmm. I have generally taken it to mean in the same manner as, but I have come to realize that it could also mean at the same time as does the Greek provide any insight into which was intended. Both certainly would seem to be appropriate. Such a little word to mean so much. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I think generally to jump into this, the Lord's Prayer appears only uh, in Matthew, and this Matthew 6. So we're going to be going with with Matthew 6, verses 12 through 14 uh, for this question. In the Greek New Testament, the passage reads, forgive us our debts as, and the Greek word is hos there, we forgive our debtors. There, there is no Greek word "hos" later in verses fourteen and fifteen about the trespasses. So it only occurs in the one spot. So since the question revolves around that little conjunction "hos," uh, I wanted to point that out that it's it's only in one part of it. So the question suggests a choice between in the same manner, that which would be comparative, or at the same time, which would be temporal. Again, to use grammar speak, uh, the comparative is. Uh, you could probably argue that the comparative is the predominant semantic for the conjunction host. However, grammars uh, do note temporal uh, semantics for the conjunction in certain passages. So the the at the same time idea or or translation that that's legit. I mean, uh, you, you certainly have that possibility. Now, if, if we look this up in uh, BDAG, which is the standard you know lexicon for the Greek New Testament, uh, it will note uh, that. Host can be a temporal conjunction, and it will actually say with the aorist. It recommends the the translation of when or after. You know, in other words, there's there's when something happens, you know, that, or, or or after something happens. You know, then you know you you have that temporal sort of sense. Now in Matthew, the verbs are aorist, so again, you you have a temporal possibility there, and you could translate it. You know, something like let me just go to. To Matthew 6 here and go to the actual example. Forgive us our debts when we have forgiven our debtors or after we have forgiven our debtors. I mean, if you go with when, that that's a little more closely coordinated, the, you know, the, the both sides of the forgiveness. After is, I mean, there, after implies a little bit more chronology. This happens, then that happens. And when is like this, uh, you get this feeling of simultaneity or, or something that approximates simultaneity. I mean, but there's no way to, to be any more granular than that. So, you know, back to the question, does the Greek provide any insight into which option, which of those semantic options was intended? Uh, about what all you can say is both certainly would seem appropriate. I mean, you could go with either, you know, the comparison or the temporal idea, but there's no there's no way to really say, well, this is this is the the case here, and 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 we can build an argument to exclude the other. And I have to be honest, I don't really see the need to choose. Uh, certainly, lesser forgiveness isn't in view, uh, as though Jesus' words could be construed to mean that one's forgiveness is not of the same extent or the same quality or the same genuineness. So, if you were opting for in the same manner, let's go back to verse twelve: forgive us our debts. In the same manner that we have forgiven our debtors, well, that that's 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 implied. I mean, that's not something that can really be excluded because to argue that it should be excluded would would leave you with this possibility that Jesus is is asking you to pray, Lord, forgive us our debts in in not quite the same way or to a lesser extent than we have forgiven our. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. It's very obvious that. Without even thinking about the conjunction, we we want you know Jesus is suggesting we have a one to one correspondence here. We God's going to you know be inclined to forgive us as we have forgiven our debtors, you know, and, and that's how we should be thinking about the situation. So you know the the comparative idea in the same manner idea that seems kind of intuitive. Now when the comparison is God's own forgiveness again, that's what's being asked for in the prayer. Then it makes little sense to turn the question into Father, forgive us. To a halfway extent, so it, it just it just seems intuitive. Now, adding to that, uh, just a little thought: Matthew six fourteen. If you go two verses later, seems to provide a chronology, so to speak, by virtue of the conditional 
particle. So verse 14 says, this is ESV, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So if there is the Greek word ha'an, and it's just what it sounds like, a conditional particle. And that is typically followed, and in this case, it, this is the case, it's followed by a subjunctive verb form. Now, in the verbs up in verse 12, you know, one is an imperative, forgive us our debts, and the other one, you know, as we have forgiven others, that's indicative. You know, imperative is the mood of command. Indicative is the mood of reality. It just sort of states something that is. And down here in verse 14, we have the subjunctive. The subjunctive is the, is the grammatical mood of unreality. That is, it describes actions that haven't happened yet, like future, or that, that you know, may or may not happen based upon conditions that are set. And that's what we have here in verse 14. If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. There's there's a contingency there. So you know if that's the case, then you actually you obviously have a chronology. One thing has to happen before the other, and so you don't really have at the same time there. You you do have a chronology there, and you could you could take that chronology that's clearly presumed in verse 14, and then read verse 12 in light of it. But you would still have a a temporal use of the conjunction. It may not mean at the same time, but there's a time element there. So either way, again, just to recap here, it allows us, you know, the host can be a comparative semantic in the same manner. It can be temporal, either at the same time or or some sort of chronological time. Uh, Both of those are operable here. Again, I don't see the need to choose. I think the only thing that you could eliminate is is simultaneity only because of verse 14. And if you wanted to to look at verse 14, you have an obvious condition. This has to happen before that does. And then you would be reading verse 12 in light of that, uh, that temporal situation.